Hello, everyone, and welcome to Heart to Heart. We are on episode seven, and today our very special guest is a multidisciplinary our community enthusiast and street dancer extraordinaire, Vanessa V. Love Lavelle. Hey. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> pretty good. Honestly, like, can't complain. I'm pretty good. That's it. We're we're alive. We're healthy. We're happy. That's the most important thing, right? By the way, exactly. uh, I like your uh, shirt. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I got my Izzy original. And we totally didn't plan this. We're wearing each other's merch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm interviewing Vanessa. I have to support. Exactly. I was like, I gotta show out. I gotta show out. People gotta see the merch. I'm That's excited right. for the next release. That's right. I'm gonna try and make it a monthly thing, but don't hold me to it because it's hard. Happens. It's hard. And it's costly. <laughs> exactly. Costly. Like that's the biggest thing. I get and it. I know like you inspired me when you had your first uh clothing drop. I was like, oh, I want to do that. <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah, I was like sitting on it for quite some time. And I was like, you know what? Like, what's the worst that can happen? Exactly. Just do it. I know, like I like the way I thought about it was like, what if no one wants to buy it? Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like when you know you create good stuff, but you're like, ooh, but does it appeal to everybody? Exactly. And that's the thing, like it's never going to appeal to everyone, but I think because we already have a community that we're in touch with, there are always going to be some people that'll support it. Yeah. Okay. So for those of you who don't know, Vanessa is a street dancer and she does multiple styles like hip hop, whacking house. And that's just a few. That's just a few of the styles that she does. Um, but can you tell everyone how you got started on your street dance journey? Yeah. So I always say that I have like two timelines. Um, first timeline, I grew up dancing like just socially in my house. But in terms of training, I started training like, oh my gosh, a long time ago. I'll just say that. And but in terms of like specifically my street dance journey, it was actually after I finished university is when I started to become more immersed in the street dance community. So while I was in university in like my last year of school, I actually ended up working at a dance studio because I was like, I need money and I don't really feel like working in retail anymore. So through working at that dance studio, I actually met like a lot of amazing dancers and that kind of like lit the fire in me wanting to train more in hip hop, but I was actually training a lot in house. And then once I was done school, I came back to Ottawa. So it's actually been almost, no, it has been like 10, 11. I think this is the 11th year that I've been back in Ottawa since school. So like you can do the math in terms of how old I am. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, um, once I came back, I, I like knew some people like from my studio days and then some of them were like doing group stuff. And then after I found out about the Flava Factory studio and it was kind of in line with what I wanted to do in terms of training. So I was like, oh, these people are like dope dancers. So Rise and Sarah actually were like one of the first people to like kind of take me under their wings into the community. So again, I started training a lot in house and because I was still like navigating what I wanted my professional life slash career to look like, I was going back and forth from like Toronto, Montreal, Ottawa and going to different events. And I think that's also what contributed to like my street dance journey and training. And um, yeah, so that's like the journey in a nutshell in terms of street dance. And then with that, you know, you meet people in the community, then you kind of start bouncing ideas off of each other and figuring out different ways either you want to train or even just like give back to the community as well. So years ago, um, like Alea and I would sometimes do events or we do like fundraising workshops and stuff like that. And that was like another way and kind of gave me another scope on what you can do with street dance. It doesn't always have to be about battles or performances. It can also be kind of from a philanthropy, I guess, perspective. So yeah, that's that's pretty much it in terms of street <laughs> dance. 
<laughs> yeah, because I remember you and Alea, you used to run the ladies, was it the ladies jam, ladies only? Yeah, so we did hit that beat. Yeah, that was only. it. That was, so yeah. we would do like different themes. So it's like, we'd try and have hip hop battles. We try and have like, cause we also wanted to encourage more street dancers that are women to participate. Cause I think in, at least what we noticed in Ottawa at the time, a lot of the women or young girls that were dancing, they were kind of a little shy or apprehensive to participate. So it's like, they'd be on the sideline and you know, like you'd always see them at the events, but they would never actually sign up. So we wanted to kind of let them know it's a safe space for them to foster and grow in their dance style. So, yeah. Yeah, and now seeing there's so many um, more women coming out and battling and training and and dance like and just in terms of our community like I mean I haven't I haven't been quite as active as uh, in it as you have but I still have seen like the amount like there's been so much growth and even now especially with the kids oh yeah. there's so many kids and that's what I appreciate they're so fearless they just we all need to channel a little bit of kid in ourselves you know <laughs> yes no but really so no, you're not just a dancer but you're also a dance instructor independently but also with Ottawa's uh, urban dance studio the flavor factory um, and you've been part of this community for quite some time uh, how would you describe the Ottawa street dance community and its evolution and changes and things like that? Mm -hmm. um, I think now what is really nice to see, like, especially with the, I guess, the next generation, it feels weird to say that, but yeah, like the next right? generation, <laughs> they seem really eager, but like really eager to session. And mm. I love that because it's like they're taking initiative they're like oh are you gonna be sessioning here okay what time blah blah, blah. and they're actually like organizing it and being proactive so i like that because then you still see the community is still going it's still building and there's still that like fellowship between each other so i really appreciate that and i'm i'm starting to see a lot more people become a little more i don't want to say experimental but what's the word i'm looking for not experimental, but it's just like, you're seeing the growth, you're seeing the growth in their dance. And it's just like, it's nice to see, cause then it's like, I'm learning just from watching them as well. I'm just like, this is so awesome. This is like so dope to see. So in terms of auto street dance, I think it's still very much so like that community vibe. Cause we are a small community compared to obviously like other cities. So it's nice to see that people are still trying to like push each other and elevate each other in the dance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think Flava Factory, that, that just being one of them, but that was the first time I got to really, and like Flava Factory, not just classes, but events. I really, I really got that vibe like coming mm -hmm. from a choreo background or like like in multiple troops right there's a different sense of community and team and and all that even if you don't know each other they're just like so eager that you're there they're so eager that you want to get down or participate that you're interested it's it's amazing if you ever if there's ever no there will be public street dance events again just if you haven't been before get the chance and get the chance to check out flavor factory You've been part of many uh, dance troops, like uh, Sick Minds Think Alike, uh, Driven. I don't know. Driven has many like uh, chapters. I don't remember the specific name of uh, your group that you're in because they're all different, right? All the names are are different. Yeah, but you were. Was, was it just Driven? I was just in Driven, but there okay. was like a junior chapter. Um but I was teaching that chapter. So I wasn't a part of it in the sense of performing. Okay. I was always confused, like, <laughs> because I would go to like, you know, like the, I think the first time I was introduced to Driven was like the Culture Shock uh, Showcase many, okay. many, 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 many years ago. And I was like, Driven and the younger groups associated with Driven. And I don't, I don't know, but <laughs> anyways, I digress, I digress sick minds and driven you're part of those groups to name a few um and but out of all the battles and events uh, uh that you've done do you have a favorite and why 
So when I saw this question, I was like, yo, I'm stumped. I'm actually stumped in terms of like a favorite event. Ooh. Ooh. Oh no. Oh, you know what? An event that like really stuck out with me and I'm sorry to see that it's not, it hasn't been around for like a few years now was BAM. Yes. I loved that event because you got the opportunity, like you had people coming from all over, like you had people coming internationally to this event that was hosted in Montreal. It was ran by Spicy, who's like, honestly, she's like one of my hip hop dance heroes originally from well she's from Montreal she's still in Montreal um but yeah so like for people that aren't familiar with the event it was like I think oh my gosh how long was it was it a week or like three days or something like that I could only ever go on the weekends Mm -hmm. so I'm like it's three days in my brain yeah (laughs) Yeah. you would have like all these street dancers like you had popping you had house you had um breaking I believe sometimes there were even like top rocking sections and again you had like quality judges coming from you had like Bruce coming from France um you had Marjorie RIP like such an inspiration in terms of dancers um coming from New York like you'd have Link um you'd have Buddha Stretch like all these people so talented and you got to see them showcase their talent but you also got to see like talent around the country as well And again, that whole idea of getting just like vibe with other people. And while you're vibing, you're like, you don't even realize it, but you're also elevating your dance as well. So I really liked that event. Um, In terms of performance, I don't know. I don't know. (laughs) I guess Blues Fest was like, it was, that one was fun. Yeah. It was fun because it's like, Again, for me personally, like, yes, I'm, I performed a lot back in the day, but it was more like competitive. So same thing as you, it was more like studio based. Um, But I would still like, I would get like stage fright (laughs) before going on. So I think with this one, there was still like that nervousness, but you got to be with your homies and you're just like jamming in front, like you're jamming on stage and people are actually watching you. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Like I know you came here for a musical act, but thanks for watching us dance. Yeah. So <laughs> that <laughs> so was so I'd sick. Say, yeah. So I'd say that one was like it was a it was fun. It was a nice performance. So yeah, performance and event. Those were I would say probably the standouts for me. Yeah. Cause I remember Blues Fest. Oh my like when I saw that, I was like, that's so sick. They got to perform in front of all these people, like opening for like this artist or whoever. Like that's super, that's such a great opportunity. And you could say I performed in front of X thousand a hundred amount of people. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Uh yeah, it was definitely an interesting experience to say the least. Apart from being a street dancer, you are also a digital artist and you use uh so many unique designs and bright colors and they always project so much energy and so much life. So where do you draw inspiration for your digital pieces? Um, first of all, thank you for the kind words. Cause I don't think I've really had anyone else like speak about my art, uh, <laughs> but in terms of inspiration, to be honest, I actually thought about this like a few weeks ago and my inspiration is cartoons. So <laughs> I'm a huge fan of cartoons. If you tell me to watch like a live action show, yeah, sure. I'll watch it. But if you tell me actually, that's a lie. I might not watch it. <laughs> if you tell me to watch something animated, I'm like, I'm on it. No problems. So animation is definitely a huge um, inspiration in terms of my art style and funnily enough I would say like I find for some reason Daria is like one art style or cartoon style that I find I really gravitate towards so sometimes not always but like in terms of eye shape I've definitely taken inspiration from from that show and sometimes when I first started drawing or like started posting my stuff digitally definitely like the lip shape but I'm starting to kind of figure out my own style in terms of like features but 
yeah, I would say Daria is like one of the biggest cartoon style influences. And then I was going to say Pepper Ann, but not so much. That's like before your time. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. I'm not that but it's much. a great show. If you haven't watched it, it, it was fantastic. I was a fan. But yeah, cartoons are definitely the biggest inspiration in terms of my art style. And I do, I love color. I just don't necessarily wear it all the time. So like, this is probably one of the most colorful items that I will have in my closet. Like everything else is like black, white, gray and beige, but I'm trying to veer out of that. So yeah, I try and put the, I guess I would say I have somewhat of a colorful personality. I try to exude that within my art style. Yeah, you, you definitely do. And I feel like you, you, um, I know you say you, you wear a lot of like black, white or gray or, or beige, but I find you add that little pop of color here and there, not just yeah. in your fashion, but I feel like also in your artwork, like you have the beautiful, like this beautiful crown and you also have the big beautiful hair but you also incorporate like those are just examples but you incorporate mm -hmm. so much uh color and life and like that energy it just transfers I really I really love it because I wear your t-shirts like crazy <laughs> thank you thank you um so this is this question uh is about dance or your digital art uh both but do you feel that your uh, creative process has changed? Uh, I was gonna say during this lockdown, we're not really locked down, but during this pandemic. Mm -hmm. And if so, how do you find yourself getting out of a creative funk? So interestingly enough, drawing is what like would bring me out of any artistic funk that I was having, because I would draw to calm myself down. So like when we first went under lockdown, uh, I was drawing a lot because I was like, ooh, this is a good way to distract my brain from like being overactive about everything else that's going on. And so that kind of helped me with my funk. But when I get in a funk in terms of drawing, I kind of, again, cartoons, like I'll watch a cartoon and I'll be like, ooh, is there something I maybe want to try um, drawing or do I want to like challenge myself? whether it's for me right now, my, the biggest thing I'm working on is making my own backgrounds. So whether it's like, I don't know, making it look like a galaxy or using like different types of digital paintbrushes, um, that kind of helps me get out of a funk. So it doesn't have to be um, a face that I'm drawing. It could genuinely just be like a background. So that's how I help myself in terms of drawing for dance. I think like at, in the beginning, it was definitely really hard because dancing was all that I was doing or mostly what I was doing before we went into lockdown. But I think being in lockdown kind of forced me to step back and reevaluate how, um, how I am as a dancer and like how I express myself creatively for dance. And when I was in a funk, to be honest, I just allowed it. I was like, I think I kind of just have to be in this funk and just figure things out. And then when I actively want to get out of a dance funk, I'll, I'll play a song and a song that I'm really feeling, but I don't hold myself. What's the word I'm looking for? I'm not hard on myself in the sense that I have to like kill this song that I'm dancing to. If anything, it's more so just honor your body and move however it is that you feel and try and move for the whole song and that's it and it's like then you kind of like you'll find a movement that you like and you're like okay yeah let me try and explore that a little more and that has helped me get out of my funks once in a while um but for dance specifically I've kind of just allowed myself to be in the funk and then see like where my emotions take me for my digital art it's more so I just draw backgrounds and don't try and force myself to like draw a face because then it's like I just hate it and I like erase it over and over yeah so. you you said something interesting because I I felt the same way in terms of dance wise during lockdown 
but at first my my mind was kind of like like the lockdown didn't hit me right I was just Mm -hmm. I'm like oh we're in a ghost town movie scene right like (laughs) you know like but then like not being able to actually go and express your like have a place to express yourself yourself ouch I hit myself sorry but not having to uh, a place to express yourself outside of your home because mm-hmm. sometimes your home can kind of be constraining even though you have space or something like that but I definitely I liked what you said about sort of just letting it happen and just kind of sitting in it sit in the feelings and sit and see how your body is a few days weeks when the music comes just embrace what is happening I really that's something that I could totally relate to and that's something I you basically worded how I was feeling and I didn't know how to word it but I experienced like the exact same thing I was like yeah this is it (laughs) yeah because you're kind of like oh I guess this is happening okay but again it's like you can't force you can't force yourself to express something that you're not genuinely feeling at the moment at least I think as as artists and as creatives it's hard to force yourself to to just kind of like I don't want to say to keep going because yes we have to keep going we have to keep pushing but in terms of expressing yourself and whatever your artistic gifting is sometimes you have to like allow that quietness like sometimes you have to allow yourself to just sit in whatever it is that you're feeling. I like saying sit in your emotions a lot. So Mm -hmm. that's kind of what I was doing when I was like in a, in a dance funk. Yeah. Cause if you run in your emotions, you ain't getting nowhere. Let's be honest. (laughs) But really. So do you have any advice for someone that's looking to uh, get into street dance for the first time? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I absolutely do listen to the music that you want to dance this or woo let me rephrase that whatever style it is that you want to do ensure that you listen to the music so if you want to go into hip-hop dance I highly recommend you listen to hip-hop music take time to appreciate the music um, so that you can better understand the styles that you're doing um then when you're moving forward then obviously you can like explore with like mixing and matching styles with different genres of music but I think for me personally music comes first and then obviously like whatever style or street street dance style that you're doing train in the foundations it's great to be versatile in the sense that you can do freestyling and you can also do choreography but ensure that you have that foundation yeah I would say those are like music foundation those are the biggest things for me and I know I just said street dance specifically but what about uh digital art do you have any tips for someone that's looking to just get started in that honestly use whatever it is that you have Cause I don't have, like, I don't have a fancy tablet. I don't have, I'm not using like Adobe Procreate or anything like that. I'm just kind of making it work with the software that I do have now. So just be kind to yourself in terms of whatever your starting point is. And it's hard not to, but try your best not to overthink your artwork. Just kind of do what it is that you're doing appreciate it for the moment because no matter what you will grow in your style you will grow in um what's what I'm looking for you'll grow in your skill set so just honor where you are in that time I couldn't have yeah. said it better myself no that's all right <laughs> that's true honestly like every like every starting point no one starts off at 100 like you have to start off like well I don't know what a good starting point is but just start somewhere that's not no one starts off being the best exactly yeah and no one's ever set no one's ever set like everyone is influenced by everything and like you're you may have a specific um, uh, style, but maybe your inspirations or 
or mediums or things like that change but that that again like you said comes with like growth and time and experience um like life experience not just like artistic experience but exactly. both that all like encompasses who you are as an artist same with uh, dance yes. yeah yeah same with the dance yeah I was just like I was thinking about that when I was saying it I was like huh, that works with dance too funny no <laughs> it does this is the thing like in any skill or I don't just want to like view it as a skill but in anything that you do in life there's always going to be a certain starting point and then if you're consistent and you actually put in the time and you practice like you're going to grow you're going to see progress in anything that you're doing and you kind of just have to like try your best not to compare yourself to others as well which is hard but so hard. don't do it <laughs> it's hard like I always say that there's healthy comparison not in terms mm -hmm. of like uh oh she's she's better at uh Vanessa's better at drawing eyes than I am but it's more like observing and kind of breaking it down like oh she does this thing really great what how can I and put that into my thing but do it my way so that, that's yeah. yeah so comparing like that's fine but like uh self-deprecating is not cool don't do that no none of that yeah we don't have time for that life is no. short <laughs> <laughs> apart from dancing and creating what has been keeping you busy during the pandemic yeah so interestingly enough like starting january february beginning of the year I was volunteering with this arts organization called Mask, and they had like I guess if you're not familiar or people who are not familiar with the organization, they have like a roster of artists that either do community projects or they work in schools. But they actually also well some of them not all also work in senior senior homes as well. So they have youth programming and uh, senior programming. So I was volunteering with them at the beginning of the year. And then I think around like March, I started doing an internship with them just to kind of like spruce up some skill sets that I haven't used in a while or even developing new skill sets. So I was doing that up until this month. Yeah. So up until right now. And then moving forward, I'm also working with another organization. Um, they're called MAC, M-A-C. It's the Multicultural Artist Coalition. So they're okay. still fairly, I think they're fairly young, like they're three or yeah, they're about three years old now. And in the previous years, they've hosted a women's art festival. And this year we're hoping to have it again. Um, obviously with like all the constant changes, we're still trying to figure out like dates and stuff like that, but it's for sure going to happen. Um, but yeah, so I've been working with them. Uh, and I think that's it. Yeah, I think that's it. So I've just, again, been involved in arts organizations, but more from an administrative perspective. So I think for myself personally, I'm trying to figure out ways on in how I want to be like behind the scenes, but still contribute to the arts community. And, and you've done that because you've, like before, uh, was it Tontin? I don't know if yeah, I'm pronouncing so I'm that right, like you, with Tontin? Yeah, I'm still with them. Um, and we just gave out an award. We're in June right now. So we just gave out the award this month. I'm like, what is time? <laughs> Can you believe like in two days, it's July? No. <laughs> I'm like, no, I'm like, Yo, what gone? like, what? I find I like, know. I find like these past, like, I, it's almost two years that we've been in this thing. I find like this whole pandemic thing has gone by so much quicker than like, I was going to say old life, real life. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? I just feel like the blink of an eye, like two months are done. But yeah, I'm like, I don't understand. What is this time? How is this working? But yeah, so I'm still, I'm still volunteering with them or still part of it. And I just always, I just always want to share, like, if there's micro grants out there or grants in general that are applicable to artists, I just want to help because, again, 
um, especially like for street dancers in particular, I think that they need to take advantage of the money that's out there that they can use for different projects or even different events that they may want to start hosting. Uh, there's funding out there. So if I can share about it, I'm going to let people know if I can be a part of the organization. That's even better. <laughs> that's right. Candidate Council. So if you do not have a profile on Candidate Council, I'm like talking about them like they they employ me. Candidate Council, anyways. Um, Sponsor, <laughs> sponsorship. Sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> but again, if there are artists out there that are looking for funding, you can definitely sign up for Candidate Council. There is Ontario Arts Council. Um, people in Ottawa, there's Ottawa Arts Council. There is what is it? Ottawa Arts Network. Yes. They also do a lot of mentorship programs. Um, I'm drawing a blank. But again, like there are a lot of organizations that you can get funding from. And I think if we can share that information, it helps all of us out. It helps us like learn how to build, like learn how to budget when it comes to event planning learn how to event plan you know like mm -hmm. obviously that's not for everyone but just like there's so many opportunities out there financial opportunities that you can take advantage of are there any upcoming events for you mm -mm. <laughs> i was like no the only event that i can really think of off the top of my head is the Women Arts Festival that MAF will be hosting. Unfortunately, I don't have like a, a solid date at the moment, but I would say keep your eyes and ears open by the fall. So September is looking like the likely time that we'll be doing the event. So it's actually like a two-parter. So we're doing an art exhibition. So we have visual artists and then we also will be having like musical performances as well. So, September 2021, MAC, Multicultural Artists Coalition. On Instagram, they are MACCAM, M A C C A M underscore Ottawa. But I think if you type in MACCAM, you'll find them regardless. But yeah, that's like the biggest thing that I can think of right now that's coming up. Um, and keep your eyes and ears open, mostly your eyes open for. <laughs> For I do have some merch that will be coming out soon. So I'm really, I'm actually like super excited about this one. So, well, I mean, I'm excited about all of them, but I'm really excited about this one because it's the first time I'm using like a lot of color. So, you know who's Allie? That's right up. I'm so excited. Yeah. Listen, like, I put, put me on that waiting list, VIP, whatever. I'm here for it. Put me on that list. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm waiting. I'm hoping, I'm hoping that I get it by like, at least the second week of July. So I'm still waiting to hear back, but like everything else is pretty much done, finalized. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yes. that's I think that's it. Yeah. Oh, that's so exciting. That's so exciting. Where can everybody find your work? Yeah, so you can find my work. Actually, I pretty much only post it on Instagram. So my account is belove613. Um, I was about to say it like, give an email address but I'm like no it's Instagram <laughs> oh my gosh so yeah v love 613 if you do want to buy like um totes and all that kind of stuff I do have a society six shop as well so that is just type in v love and you should find me I have um no shirts no clothing on the site it's just like pillows purses a little bit of mini art that kind of stuff um, I like literally have like one of my little pouches right here. Yeah. I keep all my lip gloss and USB. I don't know. It's an interesting mix in there. But <laughs> so yeah, I've been obsessed with the totes. But yeah, that that's pretty much it in terms of where you can find my stuff. And then if for some reason you just want to follow my everyday life where I post flowers and food. <laughs> My Instagram account is Thoughtful Nessa. So that's like more my personal account. If you want to check out her dancing there as well. Oh, yeah. There's I some... post dancing there sometimes too. <laughs> oh, right. That. <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh, you're right. Yeah. 
<laughs> you got a good mix of everything in there. All right, so Vanessa, thank you very much for joining me today. And if you guys are interested, I'll attach all of Vanessa's shop and social media handles down below so you guys can check them out. And I hope you enjoyed today's episode and we will see you in the next one. Bye. Bye. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Thanks for joining me. <laughs>